Okay, this is a hack foot. It's a uh, 16th century weapon, uh, matchlock type, approximately 36 and 3 quarter inches long, with approximately a 3 quarter inch bore. Uh, it's heavy, made of uh, cast bronze, and it has certain pieces of uh, iron embedded in it in the casting. Uh, there's a soda can so you can get an idea approximately how big around the breech is. Now we'll move that down to the muzzle and uh, see how big the muzzle is. Well, let's start comparison for the muzzle. There you go, here's a pretty good comparison for how big around the outside band of the muzzle is. Well, the hack butt has a hook. That's the hook. That's what helps originate the name of the type of weapon. Because it was hooked over a wall or a parapet. To, uh, fire it and that took up the recoil and like I said it's a matchlock type weapon and you can see the remains of the matchlock the pan right back here <laughs> heavy there's the pan for the matchlock there's a rear sight that's cast in the peep sight and uh, you see the old bronze surface with some iron embedded in it which I think were pins to hold the uh, forms of the mold in place. Got a uh, couple little dents here, probably used as a club one time or another. There's one of the pieces of iron on the bottom, possibly a loop that held the stock on. More features at the bottom. There's the hook I was talking about. about. Four and three quarter inches high. And there's a small hole in it, probably a pin to hold the stock on. <clears throat> See that? Okay. And there's a little front sight, blade front sight, like I said, peep rear sight. The bore is nice and round. Let's get a look at that. There you go. Nice round bore. Kind of a bulbous looking muzzle. Look at the top. Okay, there's that peep sight uh, I'm sorry, the front sight again. Here we are, back looking at the hack butt. We're going to go up and take a look at the marks on top of the weapon now and see what we can see. Here. There's another piece of rusty iron which looks again like a core pin. This is probably cast with a core because it's easier than drilling it. And then it was reamed out later. You got some interesting little strange markings here. Decoration exclusively at this point apparently. I'm not sure what the little figures that look like uh, sort of stars are in there. I don't know what they are. Those look like little flowers. I think it's what they are. Three little punch marks with a squiggle underneath. And here's uh, one of the big mysteries. Is This is kind of like a purse. I've heard it described as a purse shape. See that? Here's the purse shape. Get a little different angle on it. Oh, this thing is really too heavy to lift with one hand. Have to do that later. No, that's a little better. And right above the purse shape, you've got what looks like the letters I V R. Now we know that way back when, 16th century or thereabouts, when this thing was cast, I and J were used interchangeably. And you kind of have to know the context to be able to tell whether it's an I or a J. Like I or J. V, like Victor, and R, like Romeo, Roman, whatever, right over the purse shape. What does that purse shape mean? I have no idea, but I'm hoping the combination of the IVR, JVR, whatever, and the purse shape will lead to a an identity of a manufacturer, a founder, 
or a gunsmith to put this piece together. Above the IVR, we get some different little arch-like markings with uh, little dots in the middle. Somebody spent a lot of time putting those little dots in there. <clears throat> then we've got another molding similar to what we saw down below. Now for the first time we've got the emergence of what are obviously flames. We've got flames, okay? Really hot here. We've got one, two, three, four, Yeah, one, two, three, four flames, because the top of this piece is octagonal, and the bottom is round. So I really don't know what you call that, okay? <clears throat> Semi-octagonal? I don't know. Octospheroidal? Octocylindrical? How about that? Okay, then you go in another one of those moldings we talked about. Then we've got four flames heading the other direction towards the breach. Another one of those moldings. Then we've got four more flames heading towards the muzzle. Well, let's count and make sure there are four because it looks like the thing is getting a little more narrow up here. Okay. I want to make sure we get everything correct. Oh, only three. Three flames. Because we've gone from the top being octagonal to the top being three-sided. But I'm not going to say triangular. I'm going to say three-sided. Okay. Then we go through an area with no marks, no molding. And we get flames heading in the other direction. Burning backwards again. Three flames, all right? Engraved in the bronze. Uh, looks like exclusively engraving. It doesn't look like any of that was cast. It looks like it was all done after the piece was cast. Now we got another one of those moldings, and then we've got a recess. A uh, semicircular cross section recess up near the muzzle. And uh, then we've got the muzzle piece. All right. So let's go over that again. Let's go over it in reverse for you, okay? And maybe let's turn the camera around. Will that help? Okay. Here we go. We're going to take a scan all the way from the muzzle to the breech. You ready? There you go. You get your flames, you get your moldings, designs, little crosses, flowers, flames. I'm sorry, the flowers are only at the breech, all right? Now the breech is kind of square. There's a little peep sight, okay? A little peep sight we're going to aim with. Back up again, and don't forget that purse shape. I want somebody to tell me what the JVR and the purse shape are all about. All right. Uh oh, battery's running down. Ha <laughs> ha. Better change them. Bye bye.